China. In Asia this morning, for example, most of the markets higher than not much, but the Nikkei's up a third of 1%. And in Australia, the market's up almost 1%. We talk business on Dubai Eye 103.8. Join the conversation weekdays from 6 a.m. Well, at the end of last week on the Business Breakfast, we had quite a lively discussion about smuggling. We asked you what you were all bringing back in your suitcases after the summer holidays, and we were inundated with messages about Daryl Lee Licorice and Sainsbury's tea bags. We also got a message from one Tom Harvey saying, Morning, Richard and Brandy. Interesting chat. Do you want to send me an email of the food that people are missing from home and I'll see what I can do? And Tom Harvey, it turns out, is the buying director of Spinney's. And so we thought, you know what, it might just be quicker and easier to get him in the studio, which we have. Morning, Tom. Good morning. Tell us what your job as a buying director entails. So I I lead the, um, or I'm one of two people that lead the buyers, the buying team at at Spinney's. Um, And our job is very simple. We're we're there to try and find the products that our customers want and and, and sell them to them. And in the middle, we're trying to make a little bit of a margin to to make sure that Spinney's is running well as a company. Does this mean that you're jumping on and off planes all the time, flying around the world sampling licorice? Not sampling licorice and um, not necessarily jumping around on and off planes all the time, but there is a great deal of travel for me and for all of the team at Spinney's. So how do you do it? How do you decide what to stock and what not to? Well, it's, it's anything but a, a precise science. We, we start by having a team of experts, um, people who are really quite passionate foodies um, and, and really know their subject area. So, for example, Steve, who, who, who looks after our produce team, he's, um, he's, he's nearly 60 now. He's been a produce guy all his life, first as a scientist and then as a, and then as a buyer. What he doesn't know about produce really, really isn't worth knowing. So we've got people with a great deal of expertise in understanding the products. And then we're, we're just inquisitive with foodies. We spend a lot of time analysing the enormous amount of sales data that we, that we get, and that certainly shows us some trends. We've got suppliers coming in and talking to us all the time and telling us about the products that they're seeing as, 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 as products they want to launch, whether it's new products for them or, or, or distribution rights that they've picked up. And we're just a really inquisitive bunch of people. So we're constantly looking, not just within our own stores at how our customers are shopping, but in, 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 in sort of a related markets. So we look at what's going on in the restaurant world in terms of trends coming through. So, you know, listening to what, uh, what one of your earlier guests was saying about vegan food coming into, um, into the cinemas and into the food and beverage concepts there. Vegan's obviously a massive trend there. And we will then look at that and say, right, well, how are we going to make the most of that and make sure that we've got a, a compelling offer of products for, for our customers? The, the big question we have for you this morning, um, along with could you please stock absolutely everything we've got on this list, is how do you keep 200-odd nationalities happy? I mean, we've put a call out this morning. People are messaging in. It's very specific what people want. Dutch licorice, Australian licorice, South African bovril. I didn't even know South African bovril was different from your normal bovril. Arnott's Scotch Fingers, Schweppes Slimline Tonic. I'll put money on that being a Brit. Cross and Blackwell mayonnaise. Again, South African strawberry Nesquik. How do you cater for everyone? Well, we, without a doubt, we, we, we can't always get it perfect at 100% of the time. We've got a physical limitation in terms of the size of our shops, and some of our shops are bigger than others. So there is absolutely no way that we're going to be able to stock everything. And, and some of the things on the list we, we're unable to do either because of legislation um, or because of commercial agreements. We partner with Waitrose, so Sainsbury's tea bags, I'm afraid, will, will not be um, coming to, uh, coming, coming to Spinney's anytime soon. Um, but we, we, we work with our colleagues, you know, as, as a nation of 200 different nationalities, we're also a company of um, many, many different nationalities. So we get an enormous amount of feedback from uh, talking with our colleagues. Everybody is a shopper. Um, and so we can use the feedback that we're getting from them. Um, and we try and make sure that we've got a, as, as, as good and as diverse a range as we possibly can in as many stores as we can. We also take the approach that there are different stores in different parts of the UAE which are from their from their location. There are different nationalities that that, that, that live there. So, a store up in Dara versus a store down in Umsakim is going to have a very different type of um, consumer base. So, we can adjust the range that we've got between different stores to make sure 
that we're focused as closely to the local consumer as possible. So what's the tipping point? If we take something that's very dear to my heart, for example, Vogels, best toast unequivocally on the entire planet. Um, no scientific evidence to back that up, but whatever. If I wanted to see that in Spinney's, is it enough that one or two people want it in there? If I had a concerted email campaign with me and a couple of other New Zealanders, or would you think, well, there's only a, you know, what is it, maybe a thousand New Zealanders, if we're lucky, in Dubai, I'm not going to stock it. What do the numbers have to be like for you to do well, that? The, it's, it's not so much a case of just specifically looking at the numbers, because actually we'll, we'll take a much broader approach to it. So, so something like the Vogel bread, you, you mentioned that last week, and I immediately thought, goodness me, my stepmother buys that in the UK. She's always got it in the, um, in, in the bread bin at home. So we'll look at it and we'll maybe get feedback from one or two people and, and start to think about, well, actually, that's something that has got a much broader opportunity. But without a doubt, customer feedback is, is, is the lifeblood of how we run as a business. You know, our job is, is to serve our customers. So getting direct feedback from, from the customers and then telling us what they want is, is absolutely the best way of us being able, able to make sure that we're delivering what our customers want. So I would absolutely encourage people to be saying, you know, please, please do email into the Spinney's customer service and tell us about the products or, or talk to the store managers. They will send us feedback on a, on a, on a daily and weekly basis. Um, and we'll look at it and we will see what we can do. We want to make sure we've got the products our customers want to buy. You started off by saying it's not an exact science. And, and I take that. But it is quite scientific, isn't it? The, the retail industry and the supermarket industry, the way it stocks shelves, the way it positions them, how it uses floor space and looks at metrics like revenue per square foot and, and all of these things, it, it, it is a science now. There's an awful lot of data that you look at and an, an awful lot of numbers that you crunch. What does that data tell you? It, the, the data is absolutely a critical part. So we do, we do look at that and it affects what we are um, what we're going to sell, the, the stores we're going to sell it in, and, and, and how much space we will give to a particular product or a particular brand. Um, it's, it's varying all the time. We know it's a challenging retail market, but actually we've got plenty of stores that are having a most fantastic time, and we're seeing that there are all sorts of different trends coming through. So veganism, we've, we've talked about. Um, we still have absolutely huge demand for um, organic and are extending the amount of organic products that we sell. Um, people looking at partic particular um, food needs, so things like the whole free-from movement, whether it's gluten-free or dairy-free, all of these things are seeing absolutely massive growth. Our, our, um, our dairy-free vegan cheese, as an example, we're 250% we're, we're increase on that year on year. So we know that is a trend and that's something that we want to follow. What about taking stuff off the shelves? As well as people telling us what we'd like, um, some people have asked about some favourites that they think aren't around anymore. Oxo Cubes and Bisto Thickener are the two that's coming through. It's all so, glamour, glamour, glamour around here. So so some of those products, it may be a case that actually um, it's it's still on sale but it's not in the same part of the store so something like oxo cubes they're not produced to a halal recipe so we 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 are not allowed to sell those in the main part of the store okay um, keep your questions coming we're going to keep tom for a few minutes here on the business breakfast dubai 103.8 4001 or use the messenger app if you'd like to get in touch Dubai Eye News. In association with Etihad Airways. Etihad Airways invites you to create your perfect journey. Choose your options. Change your experience. Air travel has never been more personal. Etihad Airways. Choose well. On FM, online, and via the Dubai Eye app from the ARN News Centre. This is Dubai Eye News. Where we have Serena Kelly in the studio with the latest news headlines. Serena, what do you have for us? Well, Dubai police are doing their part in the fight against global drug trafficking. So they've assisted 82 countries by providing important information to them. Some figures for you. Nearly 650 kilos of drugs were seized by authorities in the first half of this year. 23 suspects were arrested in relation to those seizures, whilst 20 websites promoting drugs were blocked. 
Moving internationally, a rescue ship stranded at sea for 18 days with 98 migrants on board is refusing to leave Italian waters. The open arms ship has turned down an option to sail to Spain. So they're saying that the conditions on board are very poor, very cramped uh, to make the journey across the Mediterranean. Italy's refused to allow the vessel to dock as its ruling government claims the country's taken on too much responsibility for handling African migration to Europe. But meanwhile, apart from Spain, five other EU countries have offered to take the migrants. And you've heard of dogs helping humans or being man's best friend. Apparently, it's not just man at the moment. Have you, well, Are you suggesting Richard's pug is cheating on him? Possibly. Maybe with a cheetah. Oh, hello. Yes. So zoos in New York and San Diego have started using Labradors as emotional support compa- companions for cheetahs. So they get wild cubs God, coming. Did they ask the Labradors if they were up for well, that? Th- this is what my colleague Danny actually said. He was like, I don't know whether they're up for that. But honestly, there is video footage of cheetahs and Labradors. They're running around. They're playing. They're getting on. It's They're acting like siblings. And it's for abandoned cheetahs from the wild and cubs. It's part of a, a cheetah breeding program. Program for these zoos in New York and San Diego. They're known to be quite nervous animals, so having a doggy friend to run around with has helped them to relax. So I just thought that was an interesting one. More stories, you can d- uh, download the ARN News Centre app powered by Etihad Airways. Stay tuned for the latest in sport next. Here's the latest from the Sports Desk in association with Rivoli. Cricket Australia insists they're 100% happy with the way Steve Smith's concussion was treated in the second Ashes test at Lords. The batsman was eventually withdrawn from the final day of the game after reporting ill effects from being hit by a delivery from England's Jofra Archer the previous afternoon. Health experts are saying there's no way he should play in the next match, though. In association with Rivoli, home to the finest in watches, eyewear, writing instruments and accessories. This is the Business Breakfast. In association with Dubai Investments, investing in real estate, building communities and projects that provide a better quality of life. If you're a UAE resident, save 50% on an indulgent staycation at Address Hotels and Resorts and Vida Hotels and Resorts when you book directly through the Imar Hospitality app. Download the app via the App Store or Google Play and use promo code UAE50 to enjoy this stylish discount at some of the city's most iconic and utterly luxurious urban sanctuaries. So log in today and start planning your perfect summer to escape, recharge and rejuvenate at Address Hotels and Resorts and Vida Hotels and resorts. My name is Catherine. With roots in two continents, Heartland's enhanced British curriculum was the right choice for us. My son has benefited enormously from the exceptional specialist support staff who have allowed him to flourish both emotionally and academically. My name is Fiona Cotton and I'm the principal at Heartland International School. Join us at one of our upcoming events. For further details, please see our website, heartlandinternational.com. You want access to all markets. You expect first-class services. You deserve the best interface. And you need a partner you can trust. Saxo Bank knows what investors want. With more than 25 years of innovation, award-winning services and dedicated customer support, Saxo is your trusted partner. Find out more at home.saxo. Saxo Bank is licensed in UAE by the UAE Central Bank as a representative office. Its permitted activities in UAE are limited to market and promote the bank's products and services.